Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. Today is another amazing video with some great hauls. I don't know about you, but it has been sunny and beautiful in Kansas. I hit up some amazing garage sales on Saturday, which means I also found some great free piles. Now, I didn't know I was going garage selling, so a few days before that, I went thrift shopping, and then a couple friends hit me up with some free junk. So I'm going to make this a two-part thrift haul, thrift flip video. Part one is today. Come back on Sunday for part two. I have been finding some good baskets. So I picked these up. They were a set, a dollar, dollar fifty, dollar fifty. And I got them initially thinking I was going to upgrade some of my storage things I have in little cardboard boxes and plastic. That doesn't look very great, right? But then I got to thinking, I could make this set of three into a tiered tray somehow. I figured it out in my head. So first step was to come down to my stash and find a couple great spindles to cut some pieces off of. Next up, a few pieces of scrap wood to reinforce the bottom of the baskets and provide a base for me to screw the spindles into. I found old pieces of drawers and these are going to work perfect. Using my jigsaw, I'm cutting the spindles down to the size that I need and also these pieces of the drawer. 220 grit sandpaper on my sander. I'm just smoothing out the edges, making sure these pieces are ready for paint. Back upstairs in my workspace, I am painting all of the pieces with White Swan by DIY Paint. You can find all the paint and products I'm using today on my website, upcycledbybree.com. I love how this Zebra fan brush gets in between the crevices on the spindles. This one is linked down in my Amazon links below. Using Gorilla Clear Grip Adhesive for some extra support. Even though I will be screwing these in, I want to make sure that they are on really well. Next up, I'm using my drill and making some pilot holes where I'm going to be placing the screws. Now I'm screwing down through the basket straight into the wood. Now I will repeat those same steps for the other two baskets. Once all three baskets are complete, I hit the white pieces of wood with just a little bit of sandpaper, and now I am doing the same thing with the spindles, giving it a nice distressed farmhouse look. Here's a look at all of my pieces. I've got the three baskets and my two spindles. I'm going to seal them up before I assemble it to make it easier using a DIY clear wax. Look how buttery smooth and creamy this wax is. It is so easy to apply. You can use a brush like I'm using today or a soft cloth. I will apply it to all of the pieces of wood, including the spindles and wipe any excess back with a plain paper towel. Now it's time to make pilot holes in my base. I'm also making a pilot hole in my spindle. That's going to help my screw go in easier when it's time to drill. I will screw a screw up through the bottom of the base, as you see here, and then we will place that pilot hole of the spindle right on top and screw it down tight. You know the drill, <laughs> pun intended. Pilot hole, glue, 
Next layer on, screw it down tight. Here's where things get a little trickier. I'm taking the second layer back off. I have to figure out now how to attach that third layer on. This is the second basket. Upside down, I made a pilot hole right next to my screw, and now I am screwing a screw upwards. This is going to connect the very top layer. Making the pilot hole just a little off center on this top layer, I will screw it onto the screw I just drilled upwards through the second basket there, and ta-da, it is on. So now my second basket goes back down on top, a little more glue just to make sure it stays, and I have got my spindle upwards for that very top tray. You know the drill, <laughs> pilot hole down through the top, little bit of glue. I will place my third layer on top and drill my screw down onto it. From a pile of boring thrift store baskets to a gorgeous three-tiered basket tray, what do y'all think? Is this a hit or a miss? It totally came out sturdy enough. I was worried a little bit, but using the wood pieces underneath the baskets totally made this a sturdy, usable tray. I have it staged up here with some fruit and veggies in my kitchen. One project down and I love the way it came out. This will be available in my booth next week. It's another use for all y'all friends out there who have been hoarding spindles. Leave me a picture in the creative group if you mimic this tray. The link for that group is down below. Next up is some good greenery garlands. One is a little bit longer than the other here, but they were each $2.95. I paid around 205 after my discount. I'll tag this longer one $12.95 and the shorter one $8.95. Next up is an adorable little watering can. The gold's okay. I'll probably go ahead and leave it. Um, I'm sure I have some other gold accents that I can pair it with. 35 cents for this. I am going to throw a little bit of greenery in it and we will stage it up in my booth. I'll sell it for $2.95 with the greenery. $3 is a little more than I usually pay for a basket this size, but it was the third time I had seen it. Nobody else had purchased it, so I went ahead and grabbed it. It was $3, so I ended up paying about $2.10 for it. So not a bad deal, but it is a super fun boho basket. I am going to list this one on my website at $9.95. It is in great shape and it's got some really fun colors in it. Grabbed this, a little interesting. It's got some rubber stoppers on it, almost like it's a trivet, but there's also a handle, so maybe it's a sign. I'm not sure. For $1.50, I went ahead and grabbed it, made it about, oh, $1.15 after my discount. You guys know what is expensive. This is already perfect for making a sign, so we will give this a makeover today. I will be using my JRV stencil brushes. I've got the number 20 and 24. I also have my grain sack stripes and the Kroger stencil from my grain sack minis. After I sand this wood round smooth using 220 grit sandpaper, I'll be using DIY white swan and petal pusher to create my stencil. JRV stencils are thick, reusable stencils, and they make stenciling a breeze. Paired with the brushes, it is a perfect combo. So I'm going to use a pouncing motion for this stencil. I find with the grain sack stripes, it's easier to pounce than swirl because those little stripe details are so thin. I'm using a very dry brush, so I get minimal paint on my brush, and then I actually offload most of that paint right onto the paper towel. You see, it creates a beautiful, crisp image. 
My Wagner heat gun dries this super quick for me and I can move on to the green sack image. The heat gun is down in my Amazon links and don't forget all the paint and products will be linked on my website which is down below as well, upcycledbybree.com. I taped the stencils down to make them easier to keep in place. I'm using my smaller brush now. This is the number 24, dipping it into that pedal pusher, offloading most of the paint onto the paper towel, and I'm using a swirling motion and a very light hand, I will go over the rest of this Kroger stencil. of new old stock somebody did write 1995 in it um, and you can tell it was way older than that it is an, an appointment diary and none of the pages are filled out they're just perfectly aged with just a little bit of color and I thought about keeping it for myself um, I'm gonna go ahead and list it if it doesn't sell then I'm gonna start using it it's got some beautiful detail on it again that would be a good one for Father's Day you just don't see things like this anymore. It was $2, so I paid a buck 40. I will have it on my site at 6.95. Next up, I grabbed these little tin cups. They cost me, oh, 17 or 18 cents a piece. They say Le Bra Gel Rack Patent Pending. So I don't know, were they little jello molds, I imagine? And they do have these little indentions on them, so maybe they were for a specific rack. I know jello used to be hot, right? Do you like jello? Leave me a comment below. What's your favorite flavor? I don't really like Jello very much. Anywho, I saw Julie do a fun DIY with these. I think she put them on top of like candlesticks or maybe made some like wall sconces out of them. So I went ahead and grabbed them. Not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with them yet or if they'll be in this video, but I will make sure to use them soon after the inspiration really hits me. I paid $3.50 for this candlestick. I don't always buy single candlesticks. Geez, original price on this one was $34.95. I paid about 
and I'm going to leave it as is. I kind of like this light wood with the white carvings in it. I'm going to go ahead and list it on my website. It's a big candlestick, y'all. I picked this jug up for about a dollar five. I don't always find them with the advertising on them, so that's cool. Lewisburg Cider Mill Pure Old Fashioned Apple Cider. I was trying to find an expiration date on here, but I don't see one, so I'm not sure how old this is. I am going to go ahead and leave the label on it since it's in such good shape. My booth usually for around $9.95. If I put a, um, a stem on them, I will do like $12 to $14.95 depending. But since this one has its lid and it has some cool labeling, I'm going to do $10.95 in my booth. I paid $2.75 after my discount for this ceramic duck. She is hollow. Oh, $11,389. Mom to Dave. I didn't even notice that before. <laughs> I also paid up for this basket just a bit, but it's really nice. $2.50 for this one. And it's just a bunch of this caning wrapped around. It was $1.75 after my discount, and I'm going to list this one on my website also for $12.95. I love that sweet little nodding detail in it there. $2.05 after my discount. This is in great shape. I'm just trying to figure out what exactly it's made for. Like, what do you want to see inside the basket? It would make an adorable little like fairy garden home. I don't have a fairy garden. Maybe I should. 
comment below if you know what the original purpose for this one is. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it for just a bit and see what I can come up with. I'm sure I can come up with something cool. And if I can't, y'all will inspire something neat. So drop a comment below. What do you think this was for and what would you do with it? Next up, I have some more brass items. I couldn't pass this one up. Made in England, solid brass. And it does have some tarnish on it, but what got me was the picture. I mean, cottage core right here. And it's like made out of a, t a tin or a foil. I don't look any of this stuff up before I pull it out. I like to see and guess, you know, see if I can guess what it is. But I have so many new followers that have given me so much information and y'all, I appreciate it. So anytime you have info and I'm wrong, let me know below, kindly please. But let me know, tell me what you know. This is how I learn. You know, I just grab what I think is pretty and then sometimes it turns out to be something really cool. This was about 35 cents. I will do some research and I'll pop it in right here what I find out and I will be listing this one on my site. Next up is a little a brassy, coppery, kind of coppery, kind of brassy angel. I'll look this up online. I got it because it's time to start shopping for Christmas if you're a reseller. And I know all the metal is hot this year. It was 70 cents after my discount. I paid about $1.35 for this brass pot after my discount. I'm not sure if it's like real, real. It looks a little rainbowy, but I'm gonna shine it up and we'll put a boho plant in it and it will go in my booth with my beautiful boho dresser I have for sale. Paid around $1.30 for this cool old fryer basket. And it's funny because when I was checking out, um, I'm friends with the, the manager there and she said, oh, I knew you were gonna get that when I was putting it out. They know me now. So it will become a cool floral arrangement and I will go ahead and list it on my site after I find out exactly what I'm gonna do to it. I added in some beautiful greenery, some vintage white flowers, and a jar full of yellow vintage flowers. All of that is included in the price of $14.95, but of course you could switch that out, make it seasonal, add a cute little critter in, anything you desire. It is listed on my website, $14.95. About a dollar five and a dollar ten on these wooden bowls. They both have the velvet lined bottoms, and I will give them a nice clean and uh, reseal them with some hemp oil, and they'll shine up real nice. I haven't tried to sell the wood bowls before, but I figured I'd give it a shot. Um, I'll list them on my site in case some of y'all can't find them. Probably not for very much, maybe $6.95, $4.95. I like to keep a lint roller handy on my craft cart. It is convenient when it comes to these felted bottoms. I'm using Sweet Pickens hemp oil to shine up these wood bowls. It is an all natural food safe product as well. So if somebody wanted to eat snacks out of these, they totally could. Who can tell me what this copper pan would have been for? Well, first of all, it has a sticker in it. IMAX cat number 174B, which means absolutely nothing to me. I got it because it was copper. Now you can see that the copper is coming off. So it's plated copper, right? Leave me a comment below. What would this pan have been used for? I sold one of these on my site already. I paid the same price for the last one. It was about $1.30. And I will go ahead and list this one on my site for $9.95 as well. 
in case the person who bought it before wants a second one or in case you love this yellow mustardy color too. Don't forget, if you want to shop this haul, you can hop over to my website, upcycledbybree.com, and you'll find this amazing stuff under the collection called Latest Thrift Haul. Last two items in the haul includes this picnic basket. It's in good shape. It was about $4 or so after my discount. And this lid is, I guess, like a pressed composite wood almost. Um, but the wicker basket area is still in good shape. I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to do a little makeover on it and use it to stage up some of my enamel wear. So hopefully I will get that done on this video, but if not, I will leave it in the community tab soon. Y'all, do you ever get home with things and kind of like just think, what was I thinking? This adorable vintage print won my heart Ugh. and I mean it's gonna need to come off it's not gonna sell this way the chair was a dollar 95 as is it folds out just fine I'm going to attempt to get the stickiness off of it and then use it for staging in a little industrial vignette <sighs> it's going to be a challenge, so we will see if it ends up being worth it. I hope y'all had as much fun as I did today. If so, give me a big thumbs up and share this video with a friend who you think may love it as well. You can find all the paint products and those great flips over on my website, upcycledbybree.com. And don't forget to check me out over on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Until next time, I will see y'all later. Bye, friends. So I went ahead and... Uh, this is it's an appointment it is an appointment that I paid around a dollar thirty for this cool old I paid around a dollar off so it's plated copper right uh like uh silver uh, pl copper plated silver <laughs> i don't know i don't think that's right